Hey everybody, Eric here from Bloat Games today. Coming at you doing a little bit kind of a different video. I wanted to talk to you specifically about the Blackest of Deaths, which is going to be kickstarting on April 9th, uh, 2019 at 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, but what I wanted to cover with you is the core mechanic because this is the basic principle. This resolves about 90% of the things you do. So if you're trying to attack somebody, you're trying to make what would be a saving throw, if you're trying to climb a wall, if you're trying to resist magic, cast magic, whatever you're trying to do <clears throat> is going to involve this core mechanic. And so you see right here, for the core mechanic, you row 1d20 and 1d6 simultaneously. All right. Any applicable modifiers to the d20 row? Are you add any applicable modifiers to the d20 row versus the total target difficulty? So rowing higher is better in this game. If you meet or beat the target difficulty, you succeed. Now, on the D6, you ignore any roll of 2, 3, 4, or 5. For a roll of a 1, you add a hindrance. For the roll of a 6, you add a benefit. Okay, what the hindrance and the benefits, what they are is a hindrance is... um. It adds an additional challenge uh, or difficulty that was not present before the attempt. And what a uh, benefit would be is benefit adds an additional convenience that was not present before the attack. So actually in this game, uh, since you're rolling the D20 and the D6 at the same time, you could actually um, succeed in hitting somebody but still have a um, hindrance at it if you rolled a one, or you could totally miss hitting somebody and actually have a benefit at it if you rolled a, a six. Or of course you can succeed and a benefit, and you can succeed and a hindrance, or you can just succeed and not get anything, which is what you really get most of the time. But a couple examples just to give you an idea of what it does. So an example I have is um, a barbarian is successful with his ax attack. And however, the axe has become embedded in his opponent, and it costs the barbarian his next attack to remove it. So that would be an example of the attack being um, successful, but having rolled a 1 on his d6, he had a hindrance at it, and that's where the, his axe became embedded. And then our next one, um, the attacker is using her bow, um, but the arrow misses the mark. So she shot her bow on her d20, rolled too low, missed the mark. But she did roll a 6 on her d6, and so the benefit would be, um, however, the attack goes completely unnoticed by her opponent. And this is this is just something, the, uh, the hindrance and benefit is just something that um, you add um, spur of the moment. And if you're running the game, if you're the game master, you can even ask the players for suggestions and let them kind of control their own their own fate it makes it, it makes it um gives a lot more room for narration and a, a lot more flavor to the game i believe and then of course this game does have um, advantage and disadvantage and how you would roll advantage is you'd roll two d20s and two d6 at the same time taking the highest of both um rolls so the highest d20 and the highest d6 and then for disadvantage, you would roll um, 2d20s and 2d6s, taking the lowest rolls. And so that's how the core mechanic works. And like, like I say, if you know this, this one little thing right here, then you know about 90% of this game. So uh, I'll come back at you with another video. Thank you for listening. And have a good one.